Hey everyone, today we're going to get you on your way to mastering Apex Legends Shield Healer Conduit. We also have a lot of tips, tricks, and gameplay examples, plus there's a lot to our kit that frankly is just not clearly explained in game. If you are unsure as to Conduit's general role or playstyle, she mixes together one of the most unique kits and sets of abilities in the game. She not only can heal herself, she can heal others, control the battlefield with her ultimate, and even have some movement or assault properties through her passive and tactical abilities. So if you want to be a team player, but maybe not completely foregoing the ability Ability to make plays, then Conduit is a perfect pick. She's a support legend, which does allow her to open that extra compartment on the blue loop pills, plus also giving the squad the ability to craft teammates banners. For her abilities, she has a passive movement speed boost, a tactical that can heal shields of herself and her team, and an ultimate barricade that does allow her to control the battlefield via deployable shield jammers. The weakest part of her set is going to be her passive, but it does have some very unique use cases that are worth mentioning. Save your speed does give Conduit a 20 to 25% response so speed boost when friendly teammates are outside of the range of her tactical ability, which is 50 meters. And it does take three seconds for that boost to activate. Once active, the ability will stay up unless you break either condition of no longer looking in the general direction of your teammate, or if you do get within 50 meters of that squad member. Note that abilities like Mad Maggie's speed nodes from her ultimate will not stack with the effects of her passive. If you are wondering how far you might be from a teammate that you want to run to, the big thing to know is that if the icon on your friendly is a shield icon. This means you are within 50 meters as the shield icon is a trigger to Conduit's tactical. If the icon is not there, then you are outside of 50 meters and you will see a three arrow or chevron looking icon. Before we even get to tips right off the bat, if you are an Apex player who is newer, maybe a little slower, or if you are overall just having a difficult time keeping up with your team, then her passive is going to be so good for you as this speed boost will continually help you catch up and not just be a bad squad mate. And since we are on the topic of loot, if the squad ever needs to run run back to get ammo, maybe pick up something that was left behind, or get a knocked teammate's card, then Conduit absolutely needs to be the one to do this, as she will help alleviate wasted time doing this and minimize the amount of time that you are away from your team. This can also apply to having Conduit loot longer off the drop and having your teammate rotate earlier to better assure that you get positioning or beat others to the rotation. If one of your friendlies does end up getting eliminated in the game, but you manage to win that specific fight, having Conduit run to that adjacent POI to do the respawn is a very viable strategy as again, it's going to help speed up the process. When it comes to actual gameplay or ways to use the passive in terms of combat, there isn't a whole lot, but there are some specific ways you can utilize it depending on what you want to do for the team. The most logical one is to have Conduit be the team's anchor. This allows Conduit to hold up and control a specific location. If enemies do get too close, she can then use her ultimate ability. However, if your team is maintaining the front lines, showing presence and controlling a larger portion of the map, Conduit's passive can start to shine here as she can quickly abandon that anchored spot and push up to help the team. Second is actually just going to be the opposite. Since she does get more speed, she can patrol the perimeter of an area. If danger or enemies get too close from a different side, she's got that speed boost to retreat back. Either way is going to be viable. It really just depends on what you want to do and maybe the skill level of that conduit player. Where things start to get really interesting is going to be conduit's tactical ability, radiant transfer. There's a lot of ways to use this ability, but for starters, the ability will apply temporary shields to both friendly teammates and conduit herself. Application and effectiveness vary per each player as teammates get their entire shield recharged with temporary shields where conduit only gets a flat 64 shields recharged. The ability also is applied much faster to teammates at a rate of 16 shields per second over the span of 8 seconds where for conduit it takes longer just to get half the shields as she gets 8 shields per second over that same period of 8 seconds. This does mean that the ability is meant more for team support rather than just Conduit getting a quick health replenish whenever she wants, which would be overpowered. As we hinted at in the passive, the range of the tactical is going to be 50 meters, and friendly teammates do not need to be in visible range as the shields can be applied through walls. There's going to be what I deem to be three phases or four phases of this ability when you are using it. There's the charge up, which lasts for eight seconds. This is when the shield icon is on your screen with a lightning bolt. However, the first four seconds of this phase is only going to be when you can apply the tactical to other teammates. After the first four seconds, you then kind of go into this 1B phase where the shields continue to charge up. The second phase or the active phase is going to be where you have temp shields for 20 seconds and then the degradation or drain phase at the end, which is going to be around two seconds. And this is where the temp shields start to wear off. Since the total amount of time that you do have the shields is 20 seconds and the ability itself only has a 21 second recast timer that starts right at the end of that eight second charge up phase, you can virtually give teammates temporary shields forever. A tip to know is that if you do get shot during the temp 
temp shield's initial charge up, the charging will stop and overall, this reduces the effectiveness of the tactical. Now, if it's not continual damage, the shields can start charging up again, but if it is beyond that initial charge up phase with the lightning bolt, then you are capped out on how much temp shields you're gonna get. While everything so far is very important, what you do need to know is that when it comes to keeping your squad alive, is that it can be quite taxing to continually look at the player cards in the bottom left corner and then looking for the teammate in the center of your screen. You'll still have to do this, but you can alleviate this by understanding what the icons on friendlies mean so you can more quickly and easily apply temporary shields to players that need it. The gray shield icon means players have full shields. Yellow means they are partially weak, but still above 50%. And then red means friendlies are critically wounded, so they have sub 50% shields remaining or they are completely out. Basically, keep an eye out on those red icons as they are gonna really tell you if someone is badly hurt. There's also a green icon, and this is gonna be when friendlies are getting temp shields applied to them. In addition to understanding the icons, you do not need to be looking at teammates when you do start to use the tactical. If you are in a close range fight and aggressively running away or getting around a corner, doing the typical combat stuff, you can start the activation and then look and pan around to a teammate. The effect will automatically get applied to them when they do appear on screen or when that icon technically pops up on that character. This is just another way to more quickly react to and keep the team up. You're gonna always be able to use this ability while she has the tactical equipment kind of on the left side of your screen. As soon as this does go away, after those four seconds, you are gonna no longer be able to apply it to a teammate. When you get cracked by an enemy, the first instinct for any good player is to always take cover and apply some shields. It just makes sense until you get a conduit on the team. It's hard to train yourself to learn this, but my next tip is arguably the most important thing in this guide. It applies to whenever you are either playing as conduit or even if you are playing with one. This is that anyone who gets the beneficial effects of those temp shields means they are more or less getting a completely free battery and going straight into using your own shields to replenish or overwrite the temp shields is absolutely absolutely just a waste. Once you get the temp shields, you have like 10 to 15 seconds to make a solid attempt at a push play, maybe a counter play, maybe trade some damage. If you do get cracked again, you can now apply shields. If you are unable to do anything within those 10 to 15 seconds, then I would not rush it. You're almost out of time, so don't stress. Just apply some shields to then override Condos Tactical. This is very important, and honestly, it does mean that you're gonna have like an extra dozen, maybe even two dozen batteries a game, which can really add up if you are in slow ranked games. If you do wanna apply any sort of heals while the tactical is charging up or you do have temp shields already, you should be applying a med kit or health heals as this is going to basically give you double the amount of heals and half the amount of time required. Not to mention, you can use the tactical at the same time as you are popping a med kit or a healing item or throwing a grenade or even shooting. Honestly, you can use the tactical when you are pretty much doing anything in the game. In my opinion, and since this tack is probably one of the most powerful abilities, at least for a tactical in the game, it makes Conduit a prime candidate to get the gold helmet and change that 21 second recast timer to just 16 to 17 seconds, which is a big deal as you can kind of just bypass that drain period. As we move on to Conduit's ultimate, ranking her in the meta and more, be sure to drop a comment down below with what legend I should revisit next in guide form. And don't forget to check my pinned comment down there as this is going to have all the updates to Conduit since the release of this video. And I will let you know if this video is no longer relevant. Conduit's ultimate is the energy barricade. This allows her to deploy a field of jammers to slow down and damage enemies who are caught inside of their 10 or so meters radius. Conduit can deploy or shoot these jammers up to 80 meters away on level ground, and for the most part, they deploy in a horizontal line covering a large portion of that battlefield. It takes about four seconds for the jammers to activate once they do come in contact with the ground, and they also last a nice 60 seconds before disappearing. Since the ultimate does have a two and a half minute recharge, which does start as soon as you deploy the jammers, you will only have 90 seconds of downtime. This also reinforces the fact that the gold helmet on Conduit is very important not just for a tactical, but also for her ultimate ability so you can have as much coverage and control as possible. The most typical way to use the ultimate is gonna be control areas with a basic deployment. This can be to cut off enemies' advancements or enhance yours. Using this energy barricade in a defensive format makes the most sense, but since the jammers do deploy in a large horizontal line, you can launch the jammers past a building, a rock, or any structure, and this is gonna stop enemies from getting a quick escape route out the back. This will give you the needed time to push up and take a fight. If you are looking to play slower and more defensively, maybe in ranked, the jammers are actually OP when it does come to slowing down late rotation teams. Slowing enemies down when the ring is at their back can be a huge problem if they do not have any sort of movement to get over the jammers. You can also use the jammers as an anti-third party tool to 
deploying the jammers to the side or in any direction that cuts off an enemy squad that might try to rotate in can be a very powerful way to let you more freely take out one team at a time. This ideally will slow enemies down long enough for you to eliminate that first squad, loot up, and prepare for the third party that is coming in. Note that this is very positional dependent and as always, being faster to take a fight and finish a fight is going to result in the best payoff. Conduit's ultimate jammers are not going to necessarily latch onto any surfaces, so if there are any surfaces that they might not be able to stick to, they are just going to bounce off. This is very evident by deploying the jammers inside and this does lead us to the technique of controlling smaller interior areas. You absolutely will not be able to cover or cut off as much ground, but being able to deploy the jammers in a panic situation on the interior means enemies basically can't do anything or they are going to take damage, get stunned, slowed, and this can lead to very easy knocks. One issue with deploying the jammers in smaller spaces is that they kind of bounce off of one another and they are going to get broken. So try to deploy the jammers in the center of rooms for the best success and to not waste part of the ultimate. There are going to be a couple ways to launch or deploy the ultimate in a way that results in not just a straight line. If you look straight down, this is going to launch the jammers into what I refer to as the flying V formation rather than the line of jammers being perfectly horizontal. This bends the line into like a cone formation in front of conduit. This can be great if you are pushing into an area and you need immediate relief in front of you. There isn't the most control with this, but if you do look slightly up from straight down, you will widen that V and this can result in you just controlling a little bit more space, such as creating a pocket of protection between the building and the ultimate jammers. This technique of looking straight down is also good to deploy them if you are getting chased, as in some ways, it's like a Bangalore ult, but more directed at your specific location. Not necessarily going to be useful, but if you do look straight up into the air, the jammers will get even larger spaces between them, but it's to the point where they create gaps in your wall. I don't necessarily see this being useful, but if you do want to give the impression of covering a larger area, this can be okay. Otherwise, as long as you are looking to the ground, the jammers will be used in a way that does let them be appropriately spaced. If you are in a pinch with little to no cover around, you can try to huddle and use the jammer as a small amount of protection. Sticking close to these is going to work best in close range fights, as they might make just enough difference to keep yourself alive. When it comes to things to look out for, there are going to be a few counters to her ultimate. Let's start with the easy one. The jammers have 250 health and you can easily shoot and destroy them, although this might be just enough to slow down enemies and it can allow you to make a counterplay. Second is going to be the typical counter of Crypto's EMP. This is probably the biggest one to be mindful. Third is going to be Watson's ultimate. The pylon is not going to stop all jammers, but it's going to break any that would fall in its radius, much like any normal grenade would. Rampart and Newcastle also have very specific counters. If there is a fully built amped wall blocking the jammers line of sight or path to you, Rampart can sit inside this little pocket even if they are inside the jammers radius. This is also going to be the case for Newcastle's tactile mobile shield. Note that you can destroy the amped portion of Rampart's walls and it is going to no longer protect her. Since Condo has the ability to slow enemies down beyond the territorial aspects as the ult physically stops enemies, you need to take advantage of this moment. This means either getting a nice beam on them or even if it is using grenades, I recommend frags as they do the most raw damage per explosion and since enemies are slowed down, it should be fairly easy to connect some damage. We already identified that carrying medkits is pretty important so you can use a tactical and a medkit at the same time. Medkits are obviously always important to have, but it's also worth mentioning that conduit may need less shields since the temp shields are going to be active a lot of the time. You will need to fill up your shields before or after the tactical wears off, but if you do carry less shields, this does open up some opportunities to carry more grenades or more ammo. Another thing that you may want to consider or even prioritize for conduit is going to be the gold armor. This is actually crazy as one shield cell right after using the tactical means conduit is going to get maxed out on her shields with 50 regular and 50 temp shields in just a few seconds. This is actually one of my favorite ways to play aggressively with this combo of cells and gold armor as it minimizes your downtime and lets you be more present in fights. Since she has 80 meters or so coverage on that ultimate, if you are anchoring, you will want more mid-range weapons like the 30-30 or triple take while also backing yourself up with an R9 or car SMG. If you are being on the perimeter or taking the role of the squad scout so you can passively run back faster, you will want more close range priority as this would be something like a nemesis or a flatline backed up again with an SMG. You don't have control over who your random teammates pick, but when it comes to making a perfect squad combo for a pre-made 
team with some friends or some ranked teammates, you will want to look at someone with some movement and also some assault properties since Conduit does have support and control on lockdown. Doubling down on this isn't necessarily going to make the most sense unless you are trying to play a lot slower in ranked. I'm going to now share some great examples of how to use Conduit's abilities and we will rank her in the meta in a moment. My first example is going to be when I do deploy the ultimate on a roof. This seems like it might be a waste, but it actually does something very unique and interesting for my gameplay. This is going to force enemies to use less of that roof so they can't go over the top of me and come to the back and flank me. If they do want to flank me, they have to take low ground, which does mean that I am going to have the high ground. This game, I knew we were already down bad. My third teammate quit out of the drop and my Wraith teammate was kind of useless and I had to control the pace of the engagement as much as I possibly could. So my ultimate on the roof more than likely forced the Bangler just to go inside the front door. I come up short with the 1v3 by a few shots, but overall, I did play this engagement pretty well. My second is just going to be the indoor ultimate. Enemies are trying to peek the stair here twice, actually, but they get penalized for it and they die because of it. Audio from the jammers right here also might have played a part as it did make it seem like the Horizon had a very difficult time tracking me when I was popping the Phoenix kit and then going up her lift, trying to kind of get behind her. Overall though, inside, I can't stress enough just how good the jammers are. When players get stunned or slowed by these, it makes it so easy to shoot them. It can be really transformative to your overall gameplay. As for where Conoit stacks up in the meta, she is mostly a legend who is right in the middle when it does come to the overall meta. She's definitely not bad, but she's also not really overpowered. I just barely have her entering the top 10, maybe the top 12 range. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video or if you want to support me. It does help out a ton. Check out this video for more on ways to improve in Apex. I will see you in the next one. Happy gaming legends.